is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to talk about Intel 8th generation CPUs, which are coming under various names. Just to make it more confusing, we have Intel KB Lake Dash R for refresh, we have Coffee Lake on the desktop, and Canon Lake. So, you know, the past three generations, nothing much has happened with Intel CPUs. They've been focusing on power management, but performance, not so much. 5% per generation at most. So if you have an Intel fourth generation Haswell machine versus the seventh generation, not a lot happened in terms of performance jumps. So something interesting is going on with Intel eighth generation CPUs for mobile, also for desktop, but we cover mobile more, so I'm going to talk mostly about that. And what they did is they doubled the number of cores for the eighth generation. So double the core should be double the speed, right? Well, it's not always that easy, right? We've seen with smartphones, Qualcomm Snapdragon CPUs, they had four cores, then they went to eight, then they went back down to four because they weren't getting the level of performance they were hoping with more cores. AMD of old often had many cores, but not really great performance. Well, that all changed with AMD Ryzen, which is one of the things that gave Intel a kick in the pants to actually boost performance. So the challenge here is, Ultrabooks the, and high-end tablets like the Microsoft Surface Pro sort of thing, they're limited to 15 watts. Those U-series CPUs are only 15 watts. Typically, quad cores for laptops have been 45 watts, the H CPUs in gaming laptops that we review. So how do you double the number of cores and keep it at 15 watts for your power consumption, for your heat generation, all those sort of things? Well, he dropped the clock speed. So I thought, well, this is not going to be good, is it? So the, the base clock speeds dropped to like 1.6 gigahertz instead of 2.8 gigahertz we had in Intel 7th generation. It doesn't sound good. But the turbo boost was pretty high at 3.4 gigahertz. And I was like, well, we've been there and done that with Intel Y series CPUs, those even lower power CPUs using super teeny tiny laptops and lower end tablets often, you know, well. But they actually managed to do something pretty miraculous and that three years they spent doing improved power management and heat reduction paid off here and allowed them to run all four of these new quad core ultrabook cpus at pretty high clock rates much of the time so they claim 40 percent improvement well we're actually seeing that now so there are core i5 and i7 cpus no surprise there there's four total that are available in eighth generation, you're going to see manufacturers offer seventh and eighth generation in the same line. Like the XPS 13 from Dell, you're going to see seventh and eighth generation CPUs with the eighth generation being at the more expensive. And others like Xiaomi, and we have the Notebook Air 13 here and the new Notebook Pro model with eighth generation CPUs, they're only doing eighth generation for this Pro model. And this one is only a seventh generation. So you're going to see a little confusing mix and match there. But anyway, four CPUs, and you can see on screen, how those compare. And you know, architecturally, they really are still KB like that's why it's KB like R. So you might not expect much, but like I said, the added cores are what do it. Now, here is the thing when you do that sort of thing and you have a very low thermal and wattage limit, that 15 watt, well, something's got to give, right? And how do you do that 40% or almost doubling, which you would expect with more cores? In fact, benchmarks are not always a good indicator because benchmarks don't run for very long. They don't run for hours at a time. They run for short bursts. And so CPUs can do pretty well because they don't hit that limit in thermal or in power as frequently. So we have the benchmarks you can see on screen here, say with PC Mark 8. And well, that's a good number. Okay, that's fine. PC Mark 8 isn't even the greatest differentiator. How is that different from the, today's quad core, like you find in a gaming laptop, the Core i7-7700HQ? Look at the difference in the graph and you see how the, the gaming laptop can keep that turbo boost speed. It's almost a straight line across the top for a reasonably long test. Whereas you see a whole lot of spiking going on on the graph for the Core i5-8250U. Uh -huh. But still, it's spending a good amount of time peaking there enough that it gets a pretty good score. Geekbench, very, very short score. Geekbench 4, not a good indicator of performance over more than a minute basically. But that's why you'll see in the Geekbench comparison that we've got going, we have the old core i5 that was in our Xiaomi Notebook Air 13 7th generation dual core versus this new quad core i5-8250U versus the core i7-7700HQ. And it looks like the 8th gen is even faster than a 45 watt CP, which shouldn't be possible, right? So, don't always believe benchmarks, short benchmarks like that. So what does it mean in real world performance? That is it really faster or is it not miraculously faster? So I used Handbrake on both of these machines. They have basically very similar architecture from the same manufacturer. So it's a good test here. You've got the same amount of RAM. You've got the same fast SSD inside. 
Good, and they both have NVIDIA MX150 low-end dedicated graphics. And then I throw in a Core i7-7700HQ using an MSI Titan Pro that has a physical button to switch to integrated graphics to make sure that wasn't involved. But Handbrake only uses the CPU, Intel QuickSync, which is optimized for video encoding and decoding. So I took a 4K H.264 video that was one gigabyte, so we're talking a pretty big file size. We're going to keep these CPUs busy for a while, converted to 1080p, H.265 HEVC, which is something that Intel QuickSync handles well on these later CPUs. And you can see, in fact, a 38% improvement in speed from the 7th generation Core i5 to the 8th generation Core i5. So it really is true. That's a real world test. That took anywhere from 18 minutes from the 7th generation down to 12 minutes for 8th generation. But still, the Core i7-7700HQ, the Quad Core 40 watt, 45 watt is still the fastest. That one, as you can see, managed to do it in nine minutes, which is a 25% improvement over our eighth gen CPU. So there's still work to be done. We're waiting to see what happens with H series CPUs, which we may not see until Canon Lake. So we've got KB Lake R, we have Coffee Lake for the desktop CPUs, and we have Canon Lake all being in the eighth generation. Ice Lake will be the ninth generation. Canon Lake will come out sometime in 2018. Intel has been delaying and pushing back, so we don't exactly know when. But there you have it. So what is the gist of this? This is finally a time when you want to upgrade your laptop. If you've been watching each of these last three years worth of generations saying, well, not much has changed here, finally something has changed. If you go for one of these new quad-core 15-watt CPUs in your Ultrabook. If you have a gaming laptop, you got nothing to worry about just yet. Wait and see what the 45-watt CPUs are going to bring. They'll probably be going up to six cores. That's what's happened on the desktop. The old four-core desktop i5 and i7s are now six cores. The i3 is four core. So you get the idea. We're adding more cores on to very great effect. It's a good time to buy a laptop this fall into the holiday season. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.